president has invited me personally to come, and I can't go. But I'm sending my daughter and her husband and her two older children uh, to represent me at the inauguration. And I'm as sorry as I can be that I can't go.
fellows. Uh, signatures be good on a check. <laughs> Some of them would be very good indeed. <laughs>
a very happy 78th birthday to you. I'm sorry that I'm not able to congratulate you in person. Your vigor, your wide range of interests, and your continuing concern with the affairs of our nation are an inspiration to all of us. Mrs. Kennedy joins me in wishing you many happy returns. John F. Kennedy. Mr. President, everyone in this room is either a relative or a friend or a neighbor of yours, and I guess most of them are probably wondering what a Texan could say about a man from Missouri that they didn't already know. Well, anyway, when you have to hire a dining room to give a man a birthday party, the occasion sort of speaks for itself. If there's anything that I can contribute to a get-together like this, it's because I'm one of those who stayed behind in Washington when you had sense enough to come home to Missouri. So I feel like I'm in a position to bring you fresh word from your friends around the world. And the word is, Mr. President, we thank Harry Truman for everything. These people who have, are here today and who have served with me along this line here know all my shortcomings, all my uh, foibles and things that were not as they should be at the time, but when they're willing to come, well, we we'll say 15 or 20 years after the fact, and still say that the old man tried his damnedest to do what was right, what, what can you do? There's nothing I can do, nothing I can say. You're a wonderful bunch of people. I'm more than appreciated. You've been too damn good to me, and you always will be, I'm sure, because it's too late now for you to change. and pressure group leaders who thought they were bigger than this new and untried, friendly man from Missouri. Well, a few bloody skirmishes and the biggest election upset of the century showed them and showed the world who was boss. The president is the boss, if he wants to be, if he's got guts enough to be, and if he knows how to be. And those of us who knew Harry Truman as a county judge and as a senator weren't worried. They play a tough brand of politics here in Missouri, and I know it. And we figured that if a man reaches the top coming out of Missouri, he's pretty able to take care of himself. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. You know what? I've been sitting here wondering who they were talking about because there is no such guy uh, alive or in this part of the world. But, you know, I appreciate what's been said, and I've uh, shed some tears over it because they're, I'm an emotionalist, you know, and they hit the point where I live. 
I can't tell you how very much I appreciate uh, what you've done. Now listen very carefully to what these people have said who were with me when the going was rough. And every single one of them is making the same statement now that he made when I had him under control. And you know, that's worth something. That's worth something.
Kansas City today is Mrs. S. Deborah Eben of New York City, the national president of the Nazi Women's Organization of America, the religious wing of the Zionist movement. Here with Mrs. Eben is Mrs. Abraham Danzig, the national vice president of Kansas City, and Mrs. Louis Rodsky, president of the Kansas City chapter, present the annual America-Israel Friendship Award. Only one of these awards is presented annually in the United States, and this year the award goes to the Honorable Harry S. Truman, the former President of the United States. Mrs. Evans, I would like to present President Harry S. Truman. Mr. Truman, I have the pleasure of presenting to you the 1966 America-Israel Friendship Award in the name of the Mizrahi Women's Organization of America. Although this award is being presented by one organization, we feel that it reflects the sentiment and the high regard in which you are held by the entire Jewish people. No person in the world who followed the rebirth of Israel and the quick manner and the prompt manner in which you acted to recognize the Jewish state and sustained it by sponsorship of economic aid and admission to the United Nations. These acts of kindness and concern for the young state of Israel in its crucial hours live undimmed in the hearts and recollections of the Jewish people. We feel that your name will go down through the ages, not only in Jewish history, but also in Jewish history as well as in American history, and as well as in the furtherance of the American Democratic Party. I have the honor to present this to you as a token of our affection and esteem, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I couldn't receive anything that I'll appreciate more. I only carried out the program that had been outlined by the Balfour Declaration. And they had waited a long time for that to be put into effect. And when it was put into effect, it was as it should be. It was right. And I, of course, I appreciate the friendship of the people of Israel. But I think we're doing something for the world in establishing a democratic program of keeping promises to free people. I'm glad to do it. Thank you. Thank you. How was it? Did I have anything in there? No, no, sir. Excellent. Was it all right? Excellent. Mr. President, I have the pleasure of presenting to you, in the name of the Mizrahi Women's Organization of America, the 1956 America Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it most highly. And I'm very happy indeed to have this friendship award because I think the friendship of every country in the world is necessary to the United States in its effort to lead the free world to a program of peace on earth and goodwill for men. Although 